This is the second slideshow called Dr. Jaeger Math Manipulatives Part 2. This particular pizza wheel is for use with formulas. Uh, you have various formulas here for geometric shapes and students would have to say what the formula stands for and well, how to do it. The next one you spin the wheel. The inner wheel will also spin and what will happen here is students will get a particular shape and they have to figure out either the perimeter or area depending where that inner wheel takes them. Uh, the next one we have uh, various geometric terms and students would have to say what this means and perhaps even draw what these are. Uh, this one is for place value. It's pretty simple as you can see the way it works. We spin the wheel and the students will have to say if it's in the ones place or tens place but we could do this with larger numbers also. The next one's called show me the money. If you looked carefully you'll see that cards need to be made and I like to use these with partners. Uh, we could uh, give them clothes pins to go along with this or paper clips. Uh, let's suppose they got the number 29 and we'd say in the least amount of coins show uh, 29 so they would go ahead in the least amount of coins and show a quarter. They would sort of put a clothes pin or uh, they would put a, a paper fastener on that one and then they could put it on the th three pennies and the one penny or they could put two clothes pins on the two pennies to get 29. The next one is converting fractions to decimals. This one is called skee ball. <coughs> Excuse me. This is one of my inventions where I took a Xerox box, cut it down on the one side, it's five inches. That's the far side, it's three inches where the bend is, and that's just the side of the box where I bend it down at three inches. I uh, took the parts that I cut off, I used a paper. Um, cutter to do that actually it was an electric knife to, uh, to uh, cut those parts off and what they do they throw a ball up and they'll land in a particular area for instance here you can see they landed on a particular month perhaps and you can say this is the before the time this time so if they land on September it would say August or we can say it's the after time that it's October now, the way we've designed this, we have the end of it uh, where you see the word, the RT at the bottom right for yogurt. I got this at an Aldi's, and you can get them at some of the other stores where the uh, yogurt is actually in these containers. But what I've done then is I'm able to pull that back side up and insert new ones all the time in terms of making it a station and making it very, very versatile. The balls I get from Oriental Trade, they're sponge balls. Uh, the next one you can see we have on the upper right and left, we have a fraction piece and students would need to put that piece where it would belong as to what it would be in a reduced state. The next one, the factor game. Uh, the way this works, let's suppose, is I'm going to put my strip over the 8, and then it's be your turn. Well, you're going to be able to cover up any factors of 8. For instance, the 1, the 2, and the 4. And then you would get to cover up your own number. And let's suppose you covered up 11. Well, I wouldn't be able to get any factors of 11 because 1's already been used. So in this game we keep going and we add up the numbers in the end as who has the most points. A really fun way to use factoring, actually it's the most fun I've ever seen in students being able to want to do factors rather than doing a worksheet. The next one is but who's adding? Uh, the first player would pick two numbers like a two and a three then they would put a circle around a five. The idea is to get x and O's of three in a row. Now, once the five is done, the next player can use only one of those numbers. So if we had the two and the three, they might say they're going to use the three, and they may use the three with a five. So now they'll put an X over the eight. 
So the whole idea, it works that way, and in who's multiplying, it works the same way in getting three in a row. Uh, this one, <coughs> excuse me, the turtle beanbag toss, a lot of fun for kids just to say the numbers. Uh, they could go ahead and add numbers, subtract numbers as to what they get. Contig is uh, coming from the uh, word, this is the base of contiguous, and here's what we mean by this. We use, first of all, three dice in this. The three dice are thrown. Uh, let's suppose uh, we got a four, a four, and a one on the dice. Well, we might choose to go ahead and using that, we could say four divided by four is one, one plus one is two. So then I could put my circle around two. The next player rolls their dice, but then they would have to get a number that's contiguous to this on the board. For instance, I have a two, so the only numbers contiguous to it are one, nine, ten, eleven, and three. Well, the play continues on this. So if that player would have gotten a five, a two, and a one, and they said five times two is ten, divided by one is ten, so now they can mark the ten with their X. Now, the next play, the numbers contiguous to the 2 and the 10 are the 1, the 9, 17, 18, 19, 11, and 3. Really a fun game can be used as a station. Two students could play it together. Wipeout, you see a set of numbers that goes 1 to 12. There's also another set that goes 1 to 12 that we would put in place at the bottom. We use those four numbers and with those four numbers, the players try to get as many points as they can by making those numbers at the bottom equal one of those numbers up there. For instance, if we said 10 take away 9 is 1, 1 plus 4 is 5, 5 plus 7 is 12. That team would then get to pull the 12 off and they would have 12 points. The next one I call the 49ers or let's get 20. With this, you can see the number of times that a student or a team can add, subtract, multiply, or pass. Now, if they're going to pass, they must do it before they throw their two die. So, the way it works, first player, let's suppose they get a six and a five. Well, they may want to multiply. So, the six times five is 30, so they cross out the one multiply. And then it's the next team's turn. Now, the thing about this one, the reason it's called the 49ers game, they have to be the closest to 49 without going over. In a lower grades, we call it let's get 20, and they're doing basically adding, subtracting, and passing in the game. And again, they can't go over 20. Really a fun game that applies the standards when you're looking at reasoning and problem solving really big. Uh, the next one, pretty self-explanatory. It's a matchup of uh, balloons here. Please help George. Uh, the next one's called, How Did You Do That? Uh, this one I really like for addressing the standards of uh, uh, students doing column addition, uh, mental math in their head. The way it works would be like this. You tell a student or the class to think of a number from 1 to 25. And in that, what they're going to be doing is, that let's suppose they said the number 15. Now, the way you are going to figure out whether what that number is, is like this. That's in the green, the 15. So, what you would be asking them is as follows. Okay, just look where the number 1 is. There's a diagonal there. It says 1, 8, 2, 16, and 4. Whatever they say yes to, you're going to add. So let's do one. If theirs is 15, but remember, you don't know that. In, you ask them, is it in the white? And if you see in the far right, it is in the white. So they'd say yes. So you add one so far. And then you ask them, is it in the blue? And they say yes, because you'll see that in the second column. The 15 is in the blue. So far we're at nine. And then you ask them, is it in the yellow? So you look to see if it's in the yellow, they would tell you, and it's no, it's not in the yellow. And then you go ahead and you ask them, is it in the white? Well, it's not in the white. And then you're asking them, um, is it in the green? Well, yes, it's in the green. 
Well, the key to this whole thing is you're going to go ahead and have them add up all of these. And uh, I did make a mistake there. It, the uh, 15, I think you will see, is also in the yellow. Well, it does add up. So whatever those numbers add up to, that is the answer. And you only ever use what I just gave you for that diagonal, no others. Really a fun game to play with the students. Uh, the next one I call Minds in Motion. The way this works, uh, we put problems on the left side or we can put answers on the left side. Let's just go with some answer on the left side. Let's suppose we put an answer of eight under jumping jacks and you tell the students, okay, here's our problem. I'm going to give you a problem and you look to see if the answer is there. When I say ready, get set, show, you do. So if the problem is four plus four and eight is at jumping jacks, the kids would all do jumping jacks. A great way to apply the standards in a bodily kinesthetic manner. The next one shows you the same idea and here we're using it with um, other uh, ways of students acting things out. I like to do it also at higher grade levels and I like to do it with sports and have things like kick the ball, throw the ball, bowling and uh, kids love it and I also allow kids at higher levels to pick the particular things they would like to have on the right side. Steps to success, very, very powerful for students. Uh, students aren't going to remember more than three different directions, so what I like to do is use this. For instance, the first direction might be to color in all of the answers to this problem. And so they might be in little balloons in the answer there. So it could be color. You put a picture of a color, a crayon there. The next one could be you're going to cut something out, a scissors. I think you see the idea here. This one helps to reinforce visually what you've said. The next one called make that spare. What I like to do here is have students <coughs> uh, decide if they're going to accept the one point for an answer to a question or they can go bowling and then I have three pins up and the pins are uh, held up with a paper clip on the back. Kids love this idea. The next one is a tic-tac-toe. They get an answer right. They spin the wheel and they go in the tic-tac-toe board to that particular shape that exactly fits what you see there in the black. Uh, the next three are dealing with sports games. They love this on Super Bowl. They get an answer right. They spin the wheel and they go that many uh, yards or do whatever it says. I allow the team to have four tries on this one and that's it. And then the other team gets the ball. Uh, the, the one for basketball, they alternate back and forth. <coughs> Excuse me, they get an answer right. They get to spin the wheel and to do whatever it says and it's the other team's turn. And we keep going back and forth. I usually like a time limit on this one, about eight or ten minutes. Uh, this one, you need uh, two baseball diamonds and I like to have caps or, or hats to go with it, like a Phillies hat or a Yankees hat that they would, you would have on with magnetic tape. For instance, if the team one gets a double, they, after they get their answer correct, um, that you spin the wheel and they put their hat there. Then it's the other team's turn using their diamond. This keeps going back and forth. A snowball fight, the students are going to use paper towels for this. They're going to go ahead and put uh, a question uh, written on the paper towel with the answer uh, from anything that we've done, a math problem. We put a barrier of about eight feet between. It needs to be a physical barrier and students are going to go ahead and then have a snowball fight with each other and then in the end they'll pick up one of the snowballs and ask the question to the person on the other side and it keeps going that way. Uh, this one is a great one to use. Um, I like it. You don't have to use those numbers but it's a good warm-up brain break wheel. Here's another one we can use in the same way for that. Body protractor, uh, the way this works is students are going to make their body into the, a particular question that you're going to ask, like uh, is the answer uh, a one, two, or a three, and they'll, they'll show that with their body. This one, partner clock, 
really like that one. Uh, universal wheel, in this one we have the ability using menu clips to be able to uh, make this very, very functional for anything we want to put there. The last one is called the Triangle of Joy. And to end this whole presentation, you see what makes joy.